City. I am honored to introduce to you someone who sees the transformative power of technology in his work every day. The UN Secretary General's Envoy on Technology, Amandeep Singh Gill. He's a longtime advocate for digital technology, and we was appointed as Envoy for Technology in June of 2022. He previously served as CEO of the International Digital Health and Artificial Intelligence Research Collaborative, a project in Geneva. He's been executive director and co-lead of the UN High-Level Panel on Digital Cooperation, and he served as India's ambassador to the Conference on Disarmament in Geneva. He holds a PhD from King's College in London, a bachelor's in electronics and electrical communications from Punjab University, and an advanced diploma in French history and language from Geneva University, a real underachiever. When we first met earlier this year, I was so impressed with his deep belief in the power of technology to make the world better, especially digital. We both see technology as a tool to improve the lives of people around the globe. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our special guest, Amandeep Singh Gill. Thank you, Gary, for that extremely warm introduction. And it's a pleasure to be here. Nice to see you, Jonathan. It's been a while. Uh, I owe my introduction to Coleman Barks to Jonathan. Uh, so we're talking about art and science. The heart and the head, the mind, must come together. We are to get technology right for the sustainable development goals. Now, I want to keep thing, things simple today. Just to start by acknowledging that we are at the midpoint of Agenda 2030, and we've fallen behind. Uh, and the reasons are obvious. Uh, last few years, uh, poly crisis, multiple shocks, whatever you want to call them, uh, and uh, an overhang of underinvestment uh, in uh, communities and in human infrastructure and physical infrastructure. So we need to catch up. Uh, and we need to catch up fast. Uh, and there is no way we can do that without leveraging technology responsibly. And this is not utopian because we see already how some countries are leveraging digital technologies to accelerate progress, say, on financial inclusion. In less than a decade, uh, India went from 25% financial inclusion to more than 80% financial inclusion, thanks to digital technologies. So it's possible. But how do we get this right? And we cannot get this right if we let the private sector, which has the resources, the entrepreneurial drive, and the reach to innovate and to scale, and governments, which have the capacity to bring different actors together, set the rules of the game to act in their own uh, parts of the backyard. We need to build public-private partnerships. And international organizations such as the United Nations that I represent today need to be umpires, arbiters of these partnerships. We need to play our role in catalyzing these partnerships. There are many ways in which we could do that. And just to pick the hottest example, which is artificial intelligence, uh, my boss, the Secretary General, has called for new data and AI commons to drive progress on sustainable development goals. Take the example of health. If we can bring data across diverse uh, sources together on antimicrobial resistance, we can build decision support systems for clinicians so when they set out to write a prescription, they know which antibiotic to prescribe which one not to, what to say, and how to do it in their proper context. And that would have a tremendous impact on something that's taking hundreds of thousands of lives every year. Or take the example of agriculture and food security. If we could bring together data on how farmers on the ground are responding to changes brought about by climate change in terms of how they plant, what they plant, what kind of inputs they use, in what kind of an agroclimatic zone, we can build better systems, food systems, that are resilient to climate change. 
and I could multiply these examples. Generative AI, the latest avatar of uh, artificial intelligence, has tremendous potential to bridge the last mile gap. There is a civil society organization called Digital Green, and it's working with ministries of agriculture from Ethiopia, Kenya, and India to bring agriculture extension to the farmers. From a traditional intervention, which would cost about $35 per intervention in terms of taking a new idea to farmers, they brought the cost down to 35 cents, a hundredfold decrease in the cost of reaching people and in their own languages. So using um, Google's universal speech model, using ChatGPT 3.5, not really the latest one, but a generation behind, they've been able to use WhatsApp and Telegram as an interface with farmers in their own language to bring the latest innovations in agriculture to them. So this is the power of technology. But we cannot harness it just by itself. You know. It's not something that's going to happen because of the force of gravity. It would require partnerships and it would require governance. Without governance, there would be no trust in the solution. The community of both users and innovators would not be able to relate to technology if there is no governance. And therefore, my boss, the Secretary General, has proposed in parallel with this AI and data commons, a first step on the way to international governance of artificial intelligence, a multi-stakeholder global advisory body on artificial intelligence. We are currently finalizing that body, should be launched next month, and its task would be to map out the opportunities landscape. What is possible in which area of the SDGs? Its task would be to map out the risk landscape. What could go wrong? I mean, we often start with good intentions to accelerate progress on the SDGs, but if it leads to gender, the gender divide uh, getting deeper, or if it leads to a further drain on the planet's energy resources, then we would be going backwards, not forwards. So we need to understand the risks, map them out, understand them also in terms of the time scale, what's most important today, what's coming in the medium term, and what could lie ahead in the long term. And finally, map out the governance landscape. What are governments, the private sector, and civil society organizations doing to bridge the governance gap? What is missing? And what should be the investment signal for companies, for philanthropic organizations, to invest in AI safety in responsible governance of AI? I'm told that of the 30 to 40,000 top AI scientists in the world, only one person are expert in AI safety. We need to raise this percentage. So these are the kind of urgent issues that this advisory body would look at so that we can get the missed use and the misuse right. And we can make progress on the sustainable development goals. I thank you very much for this invitation, for this opportunity to share some thoughts. And I'm actually looking forward to participating in the 2024 CES. Thank you, Gary.